Hey, it's Joe Ferro with Geek Toolkit, and in the last video we made uh, these, we made glasses with etchings, and I talked about making something like this, which is basically like an RGB uh, coaster for it. I want to talk a little bit about what happened over the last three weeks uh, as I tried to build that project and what I learned from it. When I showed you that project, I had an Arduino Uno hooked up to this LED ring in here. And it's, sorry, it's gonna, it's just gonna basically blur out the light, but it's a NeoPixel ring. Had three wires, I had it hooked into here. And I basically just set the glass on top of it and had it doing a pattern. It's very simple, it worked out really well. It looked really good. I got excited, I said, hey, next time I'm gonna show you how to put that into a coaster. My plan was to 3D print a case like this. I ended up printing quite a few different cases. Uh, some that had battery holders in them. Uh, some that had ridges to try to lift the LED rings up. Different sizes, different thicknesses. And at the end of the day, I wasn't having much success. In parallel, I wanted to see what other people had done. And I should have did this off the right off the start, but this company here, it's a L-O-G-U-I-D-E Low Guide, they have a very simple uh, 3M adhesed, two 3-volt batteries and four LEDs. And you basically stick it to the bottom of a glass, a wine bottle, or whatever you want to light up, and you get a great battery life with it. You've got a couple of different patterns. There's a colored one. This is similar to what I was trying to show. Nothing too fancy, it solves it. They're about $2. So if you wanna light up your etched glass and you don't wanna do any electronics, you can get these in about a seven or eight pack off Amazon. If you search for um, basically LED uh, glass, uh, you should pretty much get those. Anyway, I couldn't get what I was trying to build to work for long enough to be worthwhile. On my research from these, I came with extra batteries. These batteries are very small. They're three volt batteries, but they don't put out a lot of power. Um, they don't put a lot of amperage out. They weren't powerful enough to power what I wanted. I tried to use an AT Tiny 85. This is a very small chip that would have fit in there really well with the battery. However, these are a pain to update. You can see they also, I had an entire circuit built out here with the idea that you would have this, you'd unplug it, plug it in if you wanted to do a different pattern. I didn't like that plan, kind of scrapped it. I tried a couple of different battery holders. I was having a really hard time fitting those in. That's when I started building the battery holder into here. I realized I needed two batteries, so I built a battery holder where I could stack them, run a wire underneath here. I don't know if you can see, I have a little hole right there where there was a negative and a positive. You'd put your chips in here. I did some iterations for the top lid. You can see this is basically the same one I'm using here. Let me see if I can get that showing. Uh, so that top lid there has, it's basically this here. So the lights light through it. And at the end of the day, I couldn't get the batteries and everything working. However, the chipset that is in here, when powered with a USB cable, works really, really well. And what that chipset allows you to do is actually kind of cool. So while this isn't a coaster that you would have on a table that's wireless, if you want to show off your etched glass, you can see that looks pretty good. This here is a chip called the D1 Mini Wemo. I'll link it in the description. You can get them for about $5 a pop. You don't have to do anything crazy like go over to AliExpress or anything. You can actually get them on Amazon, just buy about five of them at a time, and you'll get them for about between $23, $25. And they can next day um, ship them to you with uh, Amazon Prime. The reason I point that out is sometimes when you get chips that are super cheap, you have to do something crazy like wait a couple months to get them, order them in huge quantities, uh, anything crazy like that. This D1 Wemo is very easy to get a hold of. It's very powerful, has plenty of GPIOs on it. And 
there is a firmware that you can flash on it. So the software you flash onto a microcontroller is called the firmware. And in this case, when you flash what's called Tasmata onto it, it becomes a web-enabled Arduino. What I mean by that is it has a web server. So I'm gonna see if I can get this, get my phone here to, to render. Give me a sec here. Okay, there we go. And this entire web server is being hosted off of this chip. So I navigate to that IP address. And then if I hit toggle, you see the light turns off. I hit toggle, it turns back on. I can dim it. I can make it brighter. It gets very, very bright. Uh, I can pull it down. Now, the reason this is really cool is there's a console here. And at the console, you can issue web commands. So you could design your own web UI or whatever, or you could just use the website interface that's built in and I can do things like say color one and now it's it's actually red. So if I want to put the Autobot glass on there and show it off, I have a red light. And if I change that to my favorite team, I can change my team's colors or in this case, I put the Decepticon one back there and then on, on this console, let's uh, try to get it to render again on the camera. We're gonna type in color color 12 and we get a purplish and now it looks still looks really cool it's really bright all those leds are working and i've made basically a smart coaster with a web interface this coaster is tied into iot and with this tasmata firmware it can also tie into my home automation system so i can do things like if somebody approaches the house the coaster will change colors I didn't really think that was too exciting, but a friend of mine mentioned that's a heck of an accessibility hack. Uh, if somebody is uh, hard of hearing and, and couldn't hear a doorbell and somebody approached their door, they could have their drink in front of them actually change colors. I think if I iterated on this more, I'd figure out a way to battery, um, battery power it. I would definitely have to lower the amount of LEDs to get the battery power to last a bit longer. I was using these CR2032s, they're a bit bigger but they only have 250 milliamps of power, milliamp hours of power. So these LEDs burn them out in about an hour. So not the best power source for them. There's some engineering problems to solve there. At the end of the day, I wanted to tell you what I ended up, what I did end up building. And I really just want to move on to this from this project. I spent three weeks on it. I could have made a bunch of videos for you guys um, with other things that I had thoughts on but I really wanted to deliver this. And I kept thinking I was almost there. And you know, you ever have a project where you just think like, you know, another hour, another day, I'll have it, you know, one more 3D print. Well, I never had it. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I burned a lot of time trying to get there. So in the end, I have this Tasmata. It's got a, a um, Web interface, let's, let's go through it real quick since I didn't see a lot of good videos on that. There's the toggle for on and off. Actually, I'll keep it off because that seems to help. Configuration is really cool because configuration, you can go to configure module. Let's see if I can get that to, I wonder if I do this, if this, yeah, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, and then does that help? Yeah. Configure module, this is what's really interesting. The Tasmata supports a large, large amount. These are all different um, devices that you can flash this firmware onto. I just have generic for it, which is what the D1 Mini goes into. But then here's all the GPIOs for my device. And you can see on GPIO 4, I've got the WS2812. This is the, the chipset behind what Adafruit has branded NeoPixels. If I had wired that up to uh, GPIO 5, I would just simply go here, go through this list and find find that. Now you also see some of the other things here. There's switches, buttons. Basically what I relay is what I'm saying is this is what's on that GPIO and that I want to control it or I want to have it do something. There's LEDs, there's PWMs. So if I have a PWM device I could that I want to control, I can tell it that counters, there's quite a few things in here. There's I squared C. 
you start getting into different chipsets. There's a WS2812. This is the um, RGB LEDs I'm using. IR and RF receivers. There's also the DHT, which is the temperature sensors. Quite a few sensors in here. And I can map any of those things, let me get this back to none, to any of these pins. What that means is, if I reconfigure the electronics on this, I don't have to reach do my code or anything. I can do it here. The other thing this does, let's back out of here, is I can configure MQTT. Now I talked about this in the Dynaframe video. MQTT would allow me to tie this into a home automation setup. So, you know, I'm showing a coaster right now, but say this wasn't a coaster, say this was a sensor, a temperature sensor. I could put a DHT uh, temperature sensor onto the D1 Mini, flash this firmware, and then configure it all via the web based on what pin it is and what I want it to do when it has a reading. And then my home automation system, I've got a very inexpensive cheap sensor. Keep in mind that D1 Mini was $5. A lot of the sensors that you can plug into there are only a couple bucks. The other thing this allows you to do is on configure module, you can actually do an over the air firmware upgrade. I'm sorry, it's in this menu here. I can do an over the air firmware upgrade directly from their website. Now I'm actually one version behind, so I can hit that start upgrade and actually pick up quite a few features and enhancements uh, again over the air without having to take this apart, unplug it and update it. So I thought that was the ultimate uh, smart coaster, if you will, something that has a website that I can change the colors here on the console. I can also do things like if I type scheme and uh, I think give it a number. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a party. Let's see if I can do a different one there. This is a clock scheme where it actually goes through like a second hand. I think there's, um, there's ones for rainbows and stuff. This is kind of actually really pretty. I wish this would come out on the camera a little bit better. There's stuff for um, uh, make it look like fire. Uh, there's stuff for like fading in and out colors. So controlling all that with my phone and uh, Yeah, this is actually really cool. Let's see if I can get this to render It's doing a rainbow and circling around the glass. So the entire glass is lit up in colors right now. The entire top here is uh, and, and it's going through the glass so the entire lid is lit up as a rainbow Sorry, it doesn't show up on my camera. I'd ideally be using my phone for the camera, but I need my phone to show you uh, I wanted to really show you what the web interface was because when I was trying to look up Tasmata, I wasn't finding a really good view of the UI and how it worked. So now if I were to set this up with a sensor, instead of seeing like dark, bright and off and toggle, I could see the sensor readings here. So you kind of get an initial UI immediately for whatever you program this to be, which I thought was really nice. You also get control of like restarting, um, the device or turning it off and such uh, from here, which I thought was really cool. And then of course information, you can actually query what Wi-Fi it's hooked up to, change what Wi-Fi it's hooked up to, and get the IP address and other things from the from the device. You can also see how strong the signal is. So well that's what I wanted to do for this video. I wanted to basically complete the RGB coaster that I promised you and show you what I ended up coming up with. I was really bummed about this wire. I did everything I could to make this battery operated, but in the end it's just not, it, it, it just wasn't worth the hassle. And I'd already burned three, out, three weeks on this project and I wanted to move on to something else. However, learning the Tasmata firmware and about the D1 Mini, learning about these cheap Wi-Fi Arduino chips, I think is going to open up a lot of other projects for myself and also may do the same for you. I think in my future projects, I'll probably start with the D1 Mini, flash Tasmana on it and go from there instead of my usual route, which is to start with the, uh, the Arduino 101, plugging stuff in and starting right into the code. Uh, and working my way through it. A lot of my projects, the stuff that I need, Tasmata would be fine for. Uh, and it's not until I need fancier things that I would actually bring in something like an Uno 
or I can still take my custom code and put my own firmware on the D1 Mini. So I'm not restricted to the Tasmata firmware. I'll probably talk more about Tasmata in a future video when I get in the home automation. Until then, there's some other videos I'll try to link in the description that are I recommend you view if you want to learn more about it. Basically, I'll show you where I learned about it. Um, the one video I really need to make is how to flash it easily because that has changed over the years. And what's happening is the videos that show how to flash it are becoming outdated as they change how to do it. So um, if, you, if I don't get that video out and you need to flash the firmware, look for ESP Easy. Pull that down and the ESP Easy um, tool that has a COM port and a command line, or I'm sorry, a COM port and a bin file. Put your Sonoff bin in that directory and you'll be able to flash it right up. It'll, it'll go really easily. Until then, I'm going to enjoy my Wi-Fi smart RGB coaster and light up some of my glasses. I'll give you one more look at it. This is the D1 Mini. I had to put a little bit underneath to fit it between the peg and the side here. Uh, but it's a very small chip. Um, this is a WS2812 ring and then or a NeoPixel ring if you want. This is a 16 LED. You really don't need that many LEDs. It's incredibly bright and I find myself turning it down more than anything. And then the top. So very simple. Thanks for watching and I'm going to get back to some other projects and hopefully some uh, some more fun, interesting stuff soon. Really appreciate the support, and I'll see you next time. This is Joe from Geek Toolkit.